This is Chargers Unleashed Podcast. Here are your hosts, Dan Wolkenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, is being brought to you by Bet Online and Charger Bolt Family. If this is your first time tuning into the show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. Dan Wolkenstein. We're now in the midst of training camp, my friend. Three days in the books. Chargers Unleashed had boots on the ground as Dan Wolkenstein was at practice today. I got to live vicariously through uh, all of Dan's updates. He was there early, had a very nice perception of what was going on. He's going to have plenty of updates for us. Dan, it's kind of been an interesting three days of practice thus far. The bulk of everything, we were there on day one, and definitely the story was the defense was getting after it, and it didn't change that much on day two. It seemed more emphatically that the defense was getting after it, and today... Had a little bit more of a balanced attack on it, a little bit. So I, I don't think the offense is going to is is like is liking this anymore. They're trying to get as they're trying to get their wins back against this revamped Chargers defense. One hundred percent. So much to get into today. Today was actually a very insightful day at training camp. Day three, uh, Friday, uh, exciting times. We've got a whole bunch to cover today. We're going to go into the the Brandon Staley and the Austin Eckler press conferences. Uh, which alluded to some of those things that you're talking about, Jake, especially with regards to the offense actually kind of fighting back for once and taking it personal to go after the defense. Uh, We're going to talk about some of our key takeaways on offense, special teams, on defense, uh, some of the key player things that we saw on on 11-on-11s, on personal drills, uh, some of the kind of the anecdotes that I was able to get for us uh, in some of the uh, drills or off-script things that I was able to to hone in. Um, But Jake, you know what the deal is. Of course. Let's, how, let's pay, how, how, how could I forget? Just let's the, pay the bills. No, little to do list. Okay. Do, is there is there any sort of like um, I don't know? Is there any sort of wager on you know which corner is going to make this roster as like CB six? I like. I really like how you're trying to do this segue with just making the the betting aspects here. Uh, we got this. <laughs> and the only reason that I wouldn't take that bet is because. It's fierce right now. I mean, who the hell knows at this point with the with how many pass breakups have happened, with how many guys have actually stood out from the younger competition on this team thus far. It's way too early to tell. So, uh, anyways, back to the business at hand. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports contests and events. With the first to market odds and lines, find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports. Esports and even golf. Woo, that took a breath right out of me trying to get through that sentence. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information from inline betting, props, and futures. Head on over today or use the mobile device to join today to make your first sports bet. <laughs> first sports bet. Use our promo code Believe50. That's B L E A V 50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Jake, last thing. Folks, be a part of the show. We're welcoming you in as as many times as you'd like to call in or text in. You can always give us a text at 31032. Use the code UNLEASHED. And from there, you'll be able to ask us whatever questions you want. Or charge, charge, call the Chargers Unleashed hotline, 323-374-5651. Questions you may have during training camp, leading up to the regular season, you name it. Let us know your takes, your predictions, how you're feeling. Uh, be a part of the show. You're one of you're one of us Chargers fans. So let's all enjoy. I feel like this is the perfect time of year for the Chargers Unleashed Hotline because, trust me, Dan and I are not blind on Twitter. We okay? see we, you. We see not everything, but we see a lot. <laughs> so I feel like this would be just a perfect avenue that. Whatever things are on your mind, and trust me, I've seen it. It's a lot. Um, whether it's emotional take. mindset, just asking for a take. Um, there are some people out there that deserve the way hot takes, cold beer type of you know <laughs> mindset. But twenty five percent off LAFB well, Network shop. Let's make it interesting because I want to actually hear some of these. I want to hear these opinions beyond the keyboard. So. I, w- I would love to hear some of these. So utilize the Chargers hotline. Dan just gave you the number. Um, we'll try to get into those coming into next week. 
So, Jake, uh, day three, we got to hear from Brandon Staley and we got to hear from Austin Eckler at the podium afterwards. Uh, why don't we start with with Austin Eckler? Uh, he got into kind of what he's seen from his fellow running backs. He got into kind of what it's been like letting the offense kind of actually take it on the chin the last few days and kind of actually fight back a little bit today, which we'll get into some of the specifics. But um, plot twist, offense actually showed up today. We got to see some plays. Um Austin Eckler kind of talked about how like he he slash they take it personal when you see a defense playing that well in comparison to you and you not clicking as fast as they are. Uh, he talked about kind of the the RB room, talked about the guys like Marks and Roundtree and Spiller and Kelly, all of them, uh, and how well they're doing so far. Again, long way to go. Yeah, he's, he talked about it being more important to see how it looks when pads come on. Um, but Eckler, always great at the mic, and he is very insightful, very good with his answers. Um, what do you have in terms of takeaways? I mean, I yeah, I like the aspect of taking it personal, but it was also, it, it was similar to Keenan Allen's quote yesterday when he was basically just saying like, hey, he was humble enough to say, hey, we got our asses kicked today. But when you think about that, if you really go back to the Achilles heel, Achilles heel of this team last year, what was it? It was the defense. This offense, it's, it's, it's been on display for what they have been able to put up last year. It was very productive. Obviously not in some people's minds, but it was still very productive. Um, and this is what you would expect after all the additions that you had on defense. Again, we're talking about a revamped defensive line with the likes of Sebastian Joseph Day, Austin Johnson, Morgan Fox, Khalil Mack. You're talking about an addition of Kyle Van Noy that for the time being is playing in the middle linebacker next to Drew Tranquil. You're talking about additions of J.C. Jackson, Bryce Callahan. Three of your draft picks alone were in the secondary with JT Woods, uh, Dean Leonard, and Jasir Taylor. There is a lot of new faces that people have had no experience on this offense going up against. A majority of them have not. So when you see this team coming out like this, I love this. I love that the defense has basically started it off with a mentality of, we got this, we're owning you. And you knew that that wasn't going to stand for a long time. You knew that the offense was going to get their feet underneath them at some point. So for Austin Eckler to acknowledge this, and he was talking about, you know, the there's some big bodies in the middle. I even like Dan, how he compared the differences in defenses that they had under the Anthony Lynn era compared to the Brandon Staley area, where he basically just said, those dudes are a lot bigger now, <laughs> essentially. So they had, they have definitely gained girth in the middle. That is for sure. So, this is the type of aspects of practice that I want to see. And just think about it. Why would you not want this offense getting their iron sharpened by this defense when it gets time to the regular season? That's the best way in camp to be. To be. And I know some people are trying to blow it up and say that the Chargers don't have speed or that this is concerning, this, that, and the other. Guys, we're talking about non-padded practice here. Talk okay. So five offense. Chill. you're going to have wins and losses throughout the next two weeks, essentially. And especially throughout preseason, you're going to see it. You're going to get wins and losses both defensively and offensively. So just take your take, your takes here just have to be with a simple grain of salt. Short story is the defense has won a majority of the practices this week. The offense is not going to let that stand, I guarantee you. So there's no reason to be freaking out when you hear some of these things. Give praise on the players that are actually going out there and making defensive plays. 100%. 100%. Alston Eckler kind of talked about, I think there's a question that was asked uh, by the pool around kind of like what advice do you give to the running backs? He kind of mentioned how important that special teams aspect is going to be for them and how important it was for him. And that's kind of where he put all of his eggs when he was trying to make this team. Uh, he talked about kind of how uh, he sees himself uh, performing. He says, he said that it's kind of interesting hearing him kind of um, humanize himself. He mentioned that he kind of messed up at the beginning and the whole rest of the day, he was trying to make sure that everything was perfect. Um, it was, it was refreshing just to kind of see him talk about, you know, year two in the scheme, talk about kind of the familiarity, how much easier it was to kind of pick up, um, talked about just how good Justin Herbert looks uh, but again, no real surprise there. Justin's just fine. And then after Eckler, head coach Brandon Staley came up there and had all kinds of stuff to say about this Chargers team. Talked about the 
uh, addition of Gerald Everett and how refreshing it has been for him to be on this team. Uh, talked about kind of his toughness and his willingness to block, which I think a lot of people, which he felt a lot of people aren't necessarily aware of. Uh, talked about Mark Webb and what it's like having him back on the squad. Talked about Justin Herbert being a leader and picking up right where he left off. Um, and he talked about kind of that offense kind of coming back. And he mentioned that the offense came out and actually delivered early in the first period. And then after that kind of set off high level football for the rest of the practice. And so I think he, he mentioned that he enjoyed kind of seeing that and it kind of put a show on for the fans. And by the way, shout out to the Chargers fans coming to Jack Hammett. That place was booming today. Multiple players talked about kind of the, the vibe there and talk about the energy that was brought by them and it makes them kind of raise their game. So shout out to you guys. You guys are helping them. Definitely uh, noted by the team. Uh, Brandon Staley talked about a lot of things. Um, he talked about the ability for kind of the, the defense to be able to kind of catch up a little bit after they kind of had that initial shock by the offense a bit. Keenan Allen had a great catch today uh, by Justin Herbert threaded it in between double coverage uh, talked about kind of having Super Bowl experience uh, on the roster and how important that is. And he was also kind of real Jake when he was asked about kind of this defense. And, you know, last year, this defense was a weakness. And he says, and I do not expect that to be the case this year. I'm surprised it's throughout all that, because obviously it's a lot to unpack from Brandon Staley's comments there. You didn't once bring up the Derwin James situation, <laughs> but obviously everybody knows what the Derwin, situa- Derwin James situation is. And long and short of it is basically there is no update on it. He basically told everybody to still just be patient with the process as part of the NFL. Um, I don't think that there's any expectations from either side that, n- that anything is not going to get done come the beginning of the regular season. Um, but for the mere fact that Derwin's out there, he's still talking with the guys. Obviously that's important. Dan, getting to the defense, because I noticed this again from one of the first pictures that you tweeted from camp, um, and this is more specifically just in the thoughts of uh, from Coach Staley to Kyle Van Oy. The first day of practice we were there, they're out there on the field doing stretches. Brandon Staley's right in Kyle Van Oy's ear for essentially the entire stretch period. It looked like it was the same thing today with the first picture that you snapped out there today. And again, Brandon Staley's comments on Kyle Van Oy, I guess they were basically saying, you know, with the Kenneth Murray situation, how valuable is it to have someone uh, of his veteran experience in that position? And he's basically just said, quote, I think that he is capable of so much fortunate for us that he can play so many different places. This guy is really special. And I think you're going to see, I think you've seen that through the first three practices, the, uh, the impact that he's had on the team. So I'm, I'm interested Dan. is, is it, I mean, I like the fact that he's putting a lot of attention on Kyle, just from a standpoint of you've seen the side conversations between that he's had between Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. And I think that this is the other focal point here, especially with a player like Murray out. He knows that he probably knows that the depth on this team is not the strongest. So he's really, I think, especially we're still talking about a four to six week period here before Kenneth Murray ultimately ends up returning. But what do you think just the value of it? Did you hear anything else there in practice or did you see anything else just from, you know, the Brandon Staley, Kyle Van Oy connection there? Yeah, I, I don't know necessarily as much of the Brandon Staley, Kyle Van Oy, but I did see Kyle Van Oy talking to Giff Smith a hell of a lot during uh, individual drills where literally it was the rest of the linebackers kind of warming up, doing their thing. And him and Giff Smith, let's have had 10 minutes where they were just chatting about different coverages, different schemes, different things to look out for. And he was really kind of picking his brain and they're kind of going back and forth, which is kind of fun to hear. Um, I do think that they're going to lean a lot on Kyle Van Noy, both from an experience perspective, as well as just from a, a leadership perspective. And I think from, you know, a pure communication standpoint, I think he gets it. And so I think they're kind of leaning on him to kind of be that facilitator. Uh, today, he wasn't quite as, it wasn't quite as long of a conversation with Brandon Staley as it was on Monday, but yes, he was there first. Um, but yeah, I think Kyle Van Noy is going to be an integral part of this team. And the crazy part is how late in the offseason they got Kyle Van Noy. And now, looking back, imagine if we didn't have him on this team. Like that linebacking core would be a huge, huge miss. So um, yeah, I mean, I, otherwise, you know, I think the Derwin James conversation, Jake, like, let's be real. Is it really a bad thing? It's not that he's gone, that he's not in there right now. He's in walkthroughs. He's walking around. He's there with the team. He's talking to the head guys. Like, what else do you want? 
We were it's, all clamoring for him to be in bubble wrap last year. So, like, what's the difference? Look, I know about a month and a half we were all questioning. He's like, is the deal going to get done? Is the deal going to get done? Look. It's going to get done. The actions right now are speaking <laughs> way more than any speculation ever could. It's going to get done. He's there. He's not holding out. The admiration between both Derwin and the organization is real. There's really nothing to worry about. Just be patient. Agreed. All right, Jake. So anything else from the press conferences before we get into kind of the, the meat of this, what everyone's looking forward to, which is kind of the, the highlights from the day, individual players. Yeah, the bulk of this is going to be coming from you. I was able to just scope a few things uh, because obviously I wasn't practiced today. So most of this is going to defer to you as far as the observations go. So where do we start, Dan? So interestingly enough, Jake, one of the players on this team uh, walked up to me and off to the side, you had Joey Bosa and you had Khalil Mack kind of sitting there uh, picking each other's brains. I believe there was also the defensive line coach there at the time. And this player was walking up to me and he, he looked at me and he said, quote, he said, you may want to get a picture of those two. I think those two are going to be good. Khalil is hungry and Joey doesn't want to be showed up. <laughs> And he went on to say, like, you know, I might be, you know, antagonizing this. I might be instigating this a bit. But you know what? Whatever. Screw it. And Jake, he's not wrong. Like, if you're a superstar, like, you don't want to get showed up. And when you see someone coming in here that's getting attention, like, there's that competitive juice in most of those superstars that are like, oh, hell no. Like, I'm still Joey Bosa. And so I thought it was interesting to kind of see that kind of competitiveness kind of come out. And, you know, everyone's talking about Khalil Mack and how hungry he is. And, you know, I'll show you. But, like, that Joey Bosa guy is not bad either. Um, so some of the, I guess, the kind of high-level takeaways I saw. Uh, offense, I think, had a lot more juice today. You saw a lot more uh, going from them. You saw key plays from uh, Mike Williams. I think there was a nice Keenan Allen catch down deep, which was a thing of double coverage in between, I think, it was Adderley. And I forget who the other player was. It was Adderley and Gilman. Yep. Uh, you saw Guyton actually get some revenge on Dean Leonard from Monday. He was actually able to make a nice deep catch uh, and pretty contested coverage on Dean Leonard. Uh, you got to see Eckler doing a little bit. Um, but if we're being honest and if we're looking at it in totality, like I still think on the whole, I think the defense probably won today. And it was pretty wild. There was a lot more action today. You know, Brand Staley talked about like, you know, the, after the offense kind of came out, I think everyone kind of just brought each other's game up a little bit. You know, you see Mark Webb get an interception. You see uh, Bryce Callahan get a pass breakup and then get another pass breakup tip over to Mike or Michael Davis. Um, you saw another Damon Lloyd sighting tackle for a loss, which is pretty that. darn good. Uh, you got to see um, JT Woods. I think communication was actually very good today. Uh, again, very fast player. Um, but again, again, like JC Jackson had a nice breakup. Like there's a lot of stuff going on where this defense just has so many new guys, Jake, that like, it's incredible when you see play after play. Oh, that was Morgan Fox. Oh, that was insert new player that has not been on this team for more than three months. So on, on the whole, you know, we'll get into specifics here in a bit, but on the whole, I do think offense did a lot better today. Uh, that said, I think defense still was probably the star of the show, but not as much as we saw in the past. Um, getting kind of into the tactical stuff, you got to see Trey Pipkins out there with the ones at right tackle, uh, which I know has kind of been revolving through. I think Storm Norton had it yesterday. Yeah, it seems like that's kind of like the rotation right now is that it's between Storm Norton and Trey Pipkins. First day, it was Storm taking on the first part of 11 on 11s. And again, this is all um, evidence from what Daniel Popper just put in his article today. It went Storm Norton, Trey Pipkins, day one on the first part of 11 on 11s. Then it flipped, started day two. It was Trey Pipkins taking the first part of 11 on 11s. And then today, once again, it started off with Storm Norton uh, for the first part of 11 on 11s at the right tackle position. So apparently what he has explained is that this is going to be the norm every day throughout training camp is that they're both going to flip flop essentially on their reps. So nothing to look into here. It's all part of the process. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm trying to, think, I'm just going through my notes here. There was one play on defense, Jake, where Asante Samuel jr. Who is a good, at least four inches, probably more uh, shorter than Mike Williams uh, stride for stride. Uh, I think had a nice pass break up there. And then I think I also had another one. I believe it was either seven on seven or 11, 11, had a pass breakup on the corner route from Josh Palmer. We had to break that up. And man, like Asante Samuels just, 
he picked up right where he left off last season and he looks even better. Some of the drills that you see him doing him, especially him and his aunt and JC Jackson, the, the physicality that they bring and kind of that, the, the dog in them that you hear a lot of people talk about, like they bring it. And then when they get to 11 on 11 and go against the offense, it's just a whole nother level. So I do think in my eyes, like those two corners are a step ahead, like a very big step ahead of the rest of the corners. Um, there was one drill, Jake, where the corners were basically going up against each other. And one was simulating being a wide receiver and they were essentially simulating press coverage. And you see JC Jackson. And then afterwards you see Santa Samuel Jr. And then afterwards you see like a Dean Leonard and Mike Davis and you see all of the corners and safeties by far. JC Jackson, Asante Samuel Jr. were the best at press coverage, keeping wide receivers flat and getting him out to the boundaries. You saw a lot of the corners that simply weren't doing that. They would get pushed back four or five yards, not going to the boundaries. Coaches will come back and talk to them and be like, hey, you got to keep it, got to keep it outside. So secondary looks good, man. Um, <laughs> it's wild to see Bryce Callahan. J.C. Jackson, Asante Samuel Jr. now healthy. You got Jazir Taylor, Dean Leonard, Brian Sebastian, all these guys, Mike Davis, who's like now all of these guys are in the full. And the the interesting part, um, Jake, is on defense, though, you know what name no one's talking about right now, which is not a good sign? <laughs> Jerry Tillery. Not one word has been talked about Jerry Tillery that I can that I have seen in three days, and for someone who is a former first round pick, someone who's trying desperately to make this squad, that doesn't bode well. Like there is a real possibility that he does not make this team, or at least there should be a real possibility that he does not make this team. I know people are like, "No, he's a lock." I don't think he is. I don't think he is. <sighs> I mean, I, I'm with you, Dan. I don't think that he, I don't. I personally don't think that he is. I think that when you look at just the fact of what the Chargers did in free agency to bring in Austin Johnson, Sebastian Joseph Day, Morgan Fox, in that position, and then to have guys that you know that are right behind you, and Brennan Fajoko, Forrest Merrill, you even have Joe Gaziano on the first day of practice having a tip drill to himself and getting an interception. I mean. This defensive battle on essentially all three levels is a ridiculous amount of competition right now between players that have been here, between free agent acquisitions, between draft picks, and guys that are literally on the roster bubble. That has a lot of heads to take account of. And when we're only talking about a 53-man roster here, there's only so many spots you could do. So to Dan's point, as far as the expectations go, for Jerry Terrelly being a former first round pick, Dan, right now the, the best scenario that I could say that is working in his favor is the experience in the system, the fact that the Chargers spend a first round draft pick on him, and if their intention is to only use him in passing situations from the interior, that can be it. Other than that, well, just like that, you. They have, they have Morgan Fox. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, right now, you would not expect Jerry Tillery to be coming in as your starter in the front three. You shouldn't be. And that would be a message. I, I and mean, we, we have we kind of felt that Brandon Staley has kind of sent the message going all the way back to, to mandatory minicamp. I think, and I think it's kind of been out in the air a little bit. Again, I still think that those three aspects are the are yeah. what's working in Jerry Tillery's favor as of right now if he ultimately ends up making this roster. But other than that, to your point, I'm, I'm with you. I was there on day one, didn't see anything, didn't hear anything yesterday. And then obviously it doesn't sound like there was much today from, from him as well. Yeah. Um, let's see what else here. Mike, Mark Webb had a nice interception. We talked about it. Cal Bryce Callahan had a tip pass. Uh, talked about the other pass breakup on Mike Williams. Uh, Bryce Callahan is making his presence felt like he was all over the interior in that slot formation, like I really like if he can stay healthy, man. Like Bryce Callahan might be low key one of the most underrated signings, along with Kyle Van Noy, that the team had this year. I think you kind of may know what your starting cornerback scenario here is going to be. <laughs> it's going to be J.C. Jackson, Asante Samuel Jr., and Bryce Callahan. Pretty much has the slot position on lock as of right now. Um, 
will that obviously rotate? Sure. When you guys, when you have guys that are versatile enough, like Asante who can play inside or outside, when you have guys like JT Woods that can man different parts of the secondary, obviously Derwin James is your ultimate chess piece. And eventually you're definitely going to get Mike Davis in there in some capacity. So it's just to Brandon Staley's point that he said on day one, can never have enough corners. And it's a beautiful thing right now. Yeah, uh, we got to see Larry Roundtree out there today. Uh, he was playing with the one. So they're again, they're cycling in uh, running backs. So you got to see, I believe it was Joshua Kelly there the first day. Uh, today, we got to see Larry Roundtree out there. Um, and then, Jake, let's talk about putting for a second. Uh, I was out there with the stopwatch <laughs> yeah. today. Yesterday, I thought, stop- or Monday, Wednesday, excuse me, I was out there with the stopwatch as well. Um, today, I was looking at hang times. And Jake, I'm telling you, and I'm telling listeners, watchers, viewers, whatever you guys are doing on this episode, uh, J.K. Scott's punts are much better than Ty Long's. Whether we're talking in practice, whether we're talking in Kauai, whether we're talking on an island, I, I don't care. Like His punts are higher. His punts are going to go faster in terms of w- when they're coming off than, the pre- than his predecessor. And look... The entire day is practice, right? So, like, who knows what happens when, you know, he's got 11 guys barreling down on him. But, like, in theory, you would think special teams roster is better, so he should be having better blocking ahead of him. He's getting the ball off faster, and he's also getting more hang time than what we had last year. So, I think I clocked in, like, multiple. I think it was at least three that I clocked at 4.7 or higher on the hang time, which I think someone I mentioned was, like, 4.1 was what... Uh, Ty Long was getting last year. So like that's like almost a second that you're getting better. So I think that's going to be a make kind of a big deal in terms of, you know, it's not just Ty Long. That was a problem last year. It's not just the blocking that was issue last year. I think a lot of things are getting solved, but I think the punting is getting, is going to be better and you're seeing it. I mean, some of those moonshots that JK Scott's hit, I'm like, dang, I know I don't know if anybody's excited about punting, but like I was watching it and I was like, you can you could tell a difference. I won't comment on anything on the punting because obviously I wasn't there to witness it, so I will not pretend to, you know, act <laughs> smart man otherwise or smart because I'm not. That's for damn sure. But I will say this, Dan. What I have observed and what I have read and what I have noticed is that the special teams drills through the first day, three days of practice, you can go all the way back to when we were in training camp last year and how much emphasis of the practice was on special teams last year. Legit. It was like half an hour, wasn't it? I, it felt like it was way too long that they were spending on some of these practices. And so now from apparently from what you've seen from Ryan Fitkin, and apparently the special teams drills are being very efficient. The practices have been quicker. If you listen to the mic up from Brandon Staley, he's going around to like three of his different coaches saying, man, that was really fast. We got to work on getting more plays in. We're like three minutes early from ending practice. We could get a couple more plays in. So these are some of the things that you've been taking away that I think Staley has learned from his first time coaching last year. And obviously you bring in a little bit more efficiency from Ryan Fitkin for the fact of how long he's been in the special teams world. I think you could already see has started to pay off dividends very well. Yeah, we talked we talk about the wheel route from Isaiah Spiller. I think it was on 11 on 11s where he, he caught it deep down the field. But I'm telling you, if that was a real game and Azir Adderley was able to hit him like that, it looked dangerously like that would have been a collision. There's no way that wouldn't have been an injury or a foul like that. It was just the 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 angles that those two were going at each other. Like you could tell that Nazir Adderley was just like hyped. Um, I will say Nas looks quick. Nas looks quicker in anticipation than I think he has looked to me at practice last year. I think you heard coach today talk today about how they think he's kind of gotten a better step this year. Uh, he's, you know, grown. Um, I think you're seeing it. So man, look, I'm not worried about the offense. People want to talk about the speed. People want to talk about them not showing up the first three days. Like that's pretty common when it comes to training camp. Uh, let's wait till the pads come on. But I do think that there is a story brewing with this defense, with specifically the secondary and the addition of Khalil Mack. Like there's, there's a lot of things that happen, but that secondary is for real. And Khalil Mack is an absolute game wrecker. Like I think Austin Eckler talked about him uh, being able to be destructive 
and be a force on the defense. Like you can see it. He kind of collapses down your tackles and guards very quickly. And that gives so much more space for the other guys. It's funny. We're talking the other guys like Joey Bosa, which is ridiculous. The other guys. (laughs) So um, yeah, today was a big day at training camp. I think we got to see a lot more intensity than we got to see in previous days. And I think we got honestly got a little bit more competition. So overall, good day. I would say on the whole, offense probably lost the game. If we're making this a game score, probably lost it 20 to 10, but better than the 20 to 3 than it was before. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, again, room for r- obvious room for improvement. You got Saturday for training camp, and then Monday, Jake, first day with pads. And that's going to be a whole lot. You're going to see differences there in the linebackers. You're going to be differences there where you can actually start to gauge like how physical is a new guy like a JT Woods, which is kind of a question mark that Brandon Staley alluded to today. Like he's got the quickness, got the athleticism, but like how physical can he be? Uh, Linebackers, they can finally hit someone. Running backs, they could get hit, get on the ground. Uh, So I think you're going to start to see some of that competitiveness, that juice kind of getting ramped up even more. And so... Oh man, box office, popcorn. I'm telling you. I had a I had a feeling today was going to be a little bit more intense, and sure enough, it delivered. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh I'll be out. I'm gonna to try to get out to training camp tomorrow. So that'll be the last day before the pads go on on Monday, which I'm very excited to see. Hopefully we'll be able to make it out there at some point next week because look, I, I just want to watch somebody hit somebody that I just might just tell someone just to haul off and, you know, tackle me into the ground just for the hell of it. Just to I say, don't think you want that. <laughs> just to say, I mean, you know, it's just not anybody, not anybody in like pads that could come and hit me, obviously. Like just someone hit me, you know, whatever. It's just like, hey, Khalil, come on. You remember the way that, that John Henderson used to psych himself up for games back in the day was when he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He'd have one of his, his, uh, you know, his player personnel in the inside of the locker room just slap him across the face and then he'd be hyped up and ready to go. Like, come on, dude. You need, a, need a smelling salts. That's what exactly. You need. <laughs> like like they say in dodgeball, Vince Vaughn's like, hey, maybe we start slapping each other or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know Jake needs football back is when he starts yeah. asking people to tackle him. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. All right, Jake, anything else you want to tell the good people? Again, we're trying to give people a kind of a short, concise day three recap. Uh, anything we missed, any kind of key takeaways you want to kind of give for day three? I mean, you're the one there, so I can't tell if you missed anything or not. So I'm not going to try to assume otherwise, but, uh, Dan, I know that we had the giveaway winner this week for the Derwin James mini helmet. Um, and if you didn't win, here's some good news. Screw it, Jake. Let's do it right now. So for celebration of Mike Williams, new contract, Mike Williams also is doing a signing event, Jake. It's actually going to be in Costa Mesa on August 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Our Bar and Kitchen. Again, Our Bar and Kitchen, 2000 Newport Boulevard. That's in Costa Mesa, 92647. You're going to see Mike Williams. He's going to have a public signing event. The event is completely free. Go ahead, show up, check it out. If you want something signed, there is going to be a flyer that we're going to be posting with set prices and things like that uh, where you can kind of get a meet and greet. You can get a picture with him. You can also get anything you want autographed. Um, but to celebrate that, to celebrate kind of kicking off the season, we're going to do a signed Mike Williams mini helmet. All you got to do, we'll put it all on social media, but basically all you got to do is retweet it and subscribe to us on YouTube and you're in. So we'll put all the details out there on social media, but look out for that. We'll probably be on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. Uh, again, love doing this kind of stuff for listeners and viewers. So Mike Williams is going to be the next giveaway from Chargers Unleashed. And trust me when I tell you, we have some doozies of giveaways coming up afterwards too. So if you don't win that one, if you didn't win this last one, like you're, you're fine. Just keep trying. We're gonna try to get a lot of people taken care of. So uh, Jake training camp football is training back camp. Saturday. Back. You're going to, you should hopefully be there. <sighs> maybe you nine, get tackled. 90% sure I will be there. Maybe, yeah, maybe you get, get tackled. tackled. Someone folks, if you're watching, listening, please don't tackle Jake unless he asks you to do so. Right. Like, don't just like randomly come up and, and do that. All right. No, just... no that, w- that would be unkind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to ask my permission and I say yes, then by all means go for it. All right. It's, <laughs> all that means to me is that, is that first it's going to put a smile on my face and like, oh, th- this person listens to the show. That's great. <laughs> they, they heard this part. Awesome. <laughs> Anyways, day four, Dan, I'm ready for it. 
so far the practice has been very encouraging from a defensive standpoint as it was today with the offense battling back a little bit let's see if that trend continues come tomorrow but uh we're in the thick of it now we're we're this much closer believe it or not the hall of fame game comes back next week even though it doesn't involve the chargers it doesn't matter because i'll still be watching it football is back Yes. For Jake Hefner, you can find him at Jake T. Hefner, myself at Dan W. Sports. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Chargers Unleashed. We'll talk to you next time as we continue more training camp coverage on Chargers Unleashed.